How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job is part two of making the new barrel for the D10 blade lift cylinder. If you missed part one, there'll be a link in the description below where we disassembled the barrel, reclaimed the trunnion mount and made some new standoffs. So before I can weld these parts onto the new barrel, I need to get it set up in the lathe and turn down the OD. Piece of material we're gonna be using, it is a piece of six and a quarter by seven inch pre-honed tube, and it is about 1800 mil long. So because it is pre-honed, we still have a bit of material to remove out of the inside, which is gonna be perfect for when we weld on the trunnions and everything shrinks, we'll be able to hone this to exact size. So I don't need to turn the entire length of the barrel down, I only need to turn up to where the trunnion mount finishes. So that is about a meter. What I need to do is I need to get as close to the tailstock chuck as possible in order to get that cut done, where I can't use my standard tooling to get right beside the chuck. So what I'm going to use, I'm gonna use a left hand tool holder, I'm gonna machine this area close to the chuck and then I will change back to my right hand tool holder and then I will machine the rest of the way up the barrel. By doing it like that, I'm gonna avoid doing multiple setups where I would have to cut a steady band, set up the steady, take this tailstock out of the way, do a little bit of machining and then pretty much move it all down the machine. Doing it like this, it's one setup, and I can just get the job completed. So I only need to take about half a mil off the OD in order for the trunnion to fit onto the barrel. Because we're only going halfway, the weld from the trunnion mount is gonna sort of blend that in, but it's not gonna change the look of the barrel or how it works. Righto guys, so I'm having a few issues with this piece of material. The OD of it is a little bit all over the place, so I would have to remove far too much material in order to get it to clean up, and that is just not gonna work out for this job. So I've called my supplier, they've already cut me a new piece of material, they've sent it down to me, I've got that set up in the lathe, so now we can keep on going.
Righto, so we've got the barrel turned down. We ended up removing about half a mil overall, and now the trunnion and the head flange fit perfectly. What I'm doing up here at the tailstock is I'm using some aluminium flashing to space the head flange back from the end of the barrel, just enough so I've got material I can face off once it's been welded. I've got the head flange alignment mark in position, so I don't need to move the barrel anymore. But what I am going to do, I'm going to use two clamps just to hold the head flange against the tailstock chuck so these shims don't fall out while I'm trying to set up the trunnion. Oh, 167. Perfect. Now that we've got those tacked on, we can take it out of the lathe and take it over to our welding area and get it welded out.
Righto guys, so we've finished welding the barrel. We've got our head flange welded on and our trunnion mount. So what I need to do now is I need to weld on the standoffs. But I didn't actually take any notice on where they go. And the reason for that is I have a jig. Righto guys, so the barrel's cooled down now. So what the standoffs do, they have a few different purposes. The four standoffs on the top of the barrel, they are used for holding a guard that protects the drop valve on top of the cylinder. The rest of the standoffs down the barrel can be used for holding on the solid hydraulic pipe that runs from the drop valve down to the cylinder gland so it doesn't vibrate while the machine is in operation. And the rest of them could be used for such things as wiring harnesses or if there's another attachment that's been put on top of the cylinder. So now that that's cooled down, we can take it over to the lathe. We need to face off the head flange, cut a chamfer on the inside of the barrel, and then we can set it up for honing.
Righto guys, now that we've got the head flange faced off and a chamfer cut on the inside of the barrel, we can now take it out of the lathe and take it over and set it up in our home. If this is George, who's that? Who's that? This one. That one makes a different sound. Oh. <laughs> I think this is the original. That's the original George, that's someone else. Yeah. That's Cornelius. <laughs> You've had enough, fatty. So what I need to do, I need to get the chain clamps set. The clamps at the moment are a really good distance apart to support the barrel, so I don't need to move them. I just need to adjust the height to suit the outer diameter of the barrel. So then the barrel is central to the spindle. The Sun and Handbook does come with that information. So it just tells you a height from the bottom of the clamp down to the head plate. Very easy to do, it's undoing one bolt and turning the clamp down. So the height of the clamps is not super critical, within a mil or so is going to be fine. The honing head does have a universal joint on it, so it will take up any variation in height in the barrel, but if you have them too far out of whack, it'll wear the stones out very unevenly. So you may notice the honing machine is dirty, and that is because I have done one job in it, which was also the day I did my training. So I was lucky enough to do that training with one of the leaders in honing in Australia. He's been in the industry for a very long time, and he has so much knowledge that I need to learn. So it is only my second job. I won't be supervised on this one. Let's see how we go. We've got the barrel clamped in place now, so you don't need to put a great deal of tension on the actual chain clamp because the jaws are serrated, so they will bite into the barrel. The clamps are really well designed. You don't want to throw a handle on there and try and tighten them right down. As much as you can exert on them with one hand is more than enough. So what we need to do to start with, we need to home the machine. So we need to send the carriage all the way to the other end. So that way the machine essentially has its zero point. Now that the machine's been homed, what we need to do is start setting up the rest of it. I do have to put in the barrel parameters, so the barrel's diameter and its length. Once we've done that, we can then bring the carriage all the way up we will fit the honing head to it with the extensions on it and then we can set a start and a stop position. Be 
because this barrel has got a big welded area in the middle of it where the trunnion is and a couple of the standoffs, it is going to be the tightest part of the barrel. So that is the first area I need to hone in order to keep everything else straight and I'm not overloading the machine. So if I was just to run this back and forward from the beginning to the end of the barrel, I would wear out stones quickly and I wouldn't get the center honed aside. So once that tight spot's been honed out of it, we can then start honing the entire length of the barrel. So we're only gonna be running the honing oil from one end of the barrel. If you try and run it from both ends, you don't really remove material. It sort of just sits in the bottom. So run it from one end and it gets pushed and pulled through the barrel with the honing stones. So we're ready to start honing now. One of the awesome things about this machine is you give it the parameters of the barrel. So the barrel's inside diameter and its length, and it will then calculate the correct feed rate and the correct RPM in order to hone that barrel out. On the screen, there is a spindle load, which is set at 50%. That is for when the machine is in full auto and it will automatically expand the hone head itself while it's running. Because we don't wanna do that because there are tight spots in the barrel we are going to run it manually and we'll be doing all the stone advancements by the spin wheel up on the carriage so I can control how much load is put on the stones and then once we get the barrel running true we can set it into full auto and the machine will just carry on doing its thing so the first set of stones I'm going to be using in the barrel are going to be a set of 47 so they are a 150 grit stone and the 47s are quite hard so they will take a bit of punishment when it comes to uneven barrels tight spots from being welded or a un honed barrel. So we'll get that barrel round and then we can then change out to something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the stroke rate and lower the RPM so it doesn't start off so aggressively and then once we start to see the load meter coming back to a more neutral position we can then start to increase things back to where they were. So we've got the machine set for cycle times of two and a half minutes. Because these are aggressive stones, you don't want to go and overcut the areas around the tight spots. So I do use the joystick just to move it forward and backward inside the tight spot so I take the material out of there. After each cycle, I will do a quick visual inspection to see what's going on, and then I will reset it for another two and a half minutes. With the load meter on the machine, it does read from zero to 100. If it is in the higher area of that scale, it generally means that's a tight spot or you are running it with maximum pressure on the stones. But 90% of honing work from what I've done has been by sound. So you listen to what the machine's doing, it will tell you whether there's high spots or hollows. So we've done about four cycles now. We've got the barrel sounding pretty good down inside. The load meter has settled down a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring the spindle speed back up to where it was and then the stroke speed back up to where it was. We'll let it run for maybe one or two cycles and then we can then qualify the rest of the barrel and see what other tight spots we have. Now the machine's been working for a little while, you can see how the oil tank works. So as the oil flows off the bed, it goes onto the filter paper and that catches all of the metal and the stone material and then the oil passes through it. So I also use metal magnetic parts trays underneath the ends of the barrel where the oil is falling into and that also helps catch some of the metal filings and material. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bollify the rest of the barrel. So I will set a new start and a new stop position. And then we can go through the barrel and see what other tight spots we have. So I've got my new start and stop position set on the machine. So now I'm going the full length of the barrel. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna run the machine very slowly. I will lower my feed rate and I will lower my spindle speed and I can watch the load meter to see what the rest of the barrel is doing. So as it's cycling, I can work out the tight spots. And then once we get the barrel running true and it's round, we can then set the machine to full auto, increase the feed rate and the RPMs of the spindle and let the machine start to remove material. While the machine is running on manual, I don't just have to use the hand wheel. I do have a bump feed button I can use to advance the stones. I also have a dwell button on the screen, which means I can stop the carriage at any position while the honing stones are still spinning. So our 47 stones are dead. We're gonna change them out for a new set of 45s. They are also a 150 grit stone, but they are a little bit softer, so they are excellent for metal removal. Overall, there's about a mill of material to be removed out of this barrel to get it to its finished size. So what I can do now, I can set the machine on auto, I can leave its five minute cycle times running, and I can go and do something else while the machine does its thing. So with this horizontal honing machine, there is no need for me to rotate the barrel while the honing process is happening. The honing head and the extension bar are not heavy enough to overcut the bottom of the barrel. During the honing process, I will use my dial bore gauge to check the ID of the barrel and take measurements at both ends. And I'll also be checking the temperature of the barrel just with my hand to make sure things aren't getting too hot because if the barrel gets too hot while I'm honing, the oil thins out, the stones gum up and we don't actually cut out any material. With a barrel this size, I will need to change out the stones three to four times during the roughing operation.
Righto guys, so I've measured the bore. We have got less than 0.01 of a mil to remove to bring it to size. The dial bore gauge doesn't reach all the way down the inside of the barrel. We are sort of relying on the load meter on the machine to tell us what the center of the barrel is doing. At the moment, the load meter is sitting very neutral. It's not bouncing. So that's gonna be pretty concentric, pretty consistent measurement all the way down. I have actually ordered a long bore gauge set, but with worldwide shortages, it hasn't arrived yet. So. At the moment, we just make and do with what we've got. Now what I need to do is remove the roughing stones, put in the finishing stones. We're gonna run them for a couple of minutes and this barrel's gonna be done. So the finishing stones we're gonna be using, they are a J87, they're a 400 grit stone. They are quite fine compared to our roughing stones and they are gonna give us the surface finish we need for this cylinder barrel. Righto guys, so all the honing is now complete on our barrel. I'm really happy with the surface finish we've achieved in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prop up one end, let all that oil drain out. And the next thing I need to do, I need to start making the new barrel end out of this piece of material. But you'll have to stay tuned for part three. Hope you all enjoyed seeing our honing machine in action. Thanks for watching. How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So to oh, fuck. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Ready? Yep. Are you ready? Yeah. Righto. Oh fuck. How do we start that? So the way I've got this set up at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use. <laughs> Where'd you start from? I already lost it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. oh. These are really crunchy. Why, what is it? Three. three what? Oh. If only the crane went all the way. Oh, if only it went all the way. But it stops there. Don't say righto guys, because you've just said righto guys over okay. there. Just- I got it. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Okay, so you- oh. So the clamps are really, 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 really <laughs> English words. <laughs> Complete them. <laughs> right. Righto, so we are nearly... Uh, <clears throat> are you ready? Yeah. We're ready to start honing. The beauty... Uh, so, oh, fuck, where was I? Going. Five hundred men. Jesus. Okay. Wait. Move your shape box. This is Curtis's idea. Oh, it's great. Be interesting what this footage turns out like. He's fucking busy. Watch <laughs> <laughs> uh, like what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll also be walking down the barrel, having oh, fuck, having a feel of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, our guys, so our barrel is. Ni oh fuck, who's this? Right, wait, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Too close. Right, our guys, so the. Oh, fuck. oh my god. <laughs> it's a Friday. What do you expect? Fucking Fridays. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dry mouth. Yum, yum, yum.